Video Lecture 9b, Bonding a la Lewis, Covalent Bonding and Electronegativity. In a previous lecture, we've seen that when a metal reacts with a nonmetal, the metal can transfer its valence electrons to the valence shell of the nonmetal, forming two ions, a metal cation and a metal anion. Both ions have, elec have electron configurations that are similar to noble gases, making them stable. However, when two nonmetals interact to form a molecule, it is in energetically unfavorable for the electrons to be transferred between them. Therefore, they must achieve noble gashood in another way, by electron sharing. When electrons are shared between two, two atoms to form a molecule, two or more atoms to form a molecule, the potential energy decreases. This poten potential energy decrease is very quantum mechanical in nature, and we will discuss it more in the pre preceding chapter. Since the electrons are shared between the atoms, we call this a covalent bond which simply means that valence electrons are shared between atoms. The simplest example of covalent bonding can be, is the covalent bond that exists between two hydrogen atoms to form a hydrogen molecule. We know from previous chapters that hydrogen, along with many other elements, exists as diatomic molecules. The reason why this is, in the case of hydrogen, is that when two hydrogen atoms share electrons, this allows for each electron to feel as if it has an electron configuration very similar to a noble gas, in this case helium. We can draw circles, shaded circles around each atom to show how, to show how many electrons are in the new valence shell for each atom. The hydrogen on the left has two valence electrons, as does the hydrogen molecule um, atom on the right. Once again, both atoms have a noble gas configuration. A slightly more complicated example is our favorite molecule, water. We know that the chemical formula for water is H2O. However, now we can describe why this is. We know from our previous example that hydrogen has one valence electron. Oxygen, being group 6A, has six valence electrons. It is two electrons away from a noble gas configuration. If one oxygen molecule, therefore if one oxygen atom shares electrons with one from each hydrogen atom, then both oxygen and hydrogen will have a valence electron configuration. This is most easy, easily achieved if the oxygen atom is placed between the two hydrogens. This allows for efficient electron sharing between hydrogen, each hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom. We can draw our shaded circles again to show that oxygen now is surrounded by eight valence electrons, giving it a noble gas configuration, while each hydrogen is surrounded by two electrons, giving both of them the same electron configuration as helium. We've seen in both examples that generally electrons are shared in pairs between two atoms. We can represent these shared electron pairs as lines in Lewis structures. The electrons that are not shared between atoms are called lone pairs since they only appear exclusively on one atom. Therefore, we can replace the shared electrons in our hydrogen molecule and our water molecule on the right with lines, as shown here. Notice that there are two lone pair electrons on the, on the water molecule.
Sometimes it may take more than one electron pair to be shared between two atoms for each atom to obtain a, no a noble gas electron configuration. This gives rise to the formation of multiple bonds. Two atoms can form a double bond between them if they share two pairs of electrons. A simple example is one of our diatomic molecules, oxygen. Two oxygen atoms must share two pairs of electrons between them so that each oxygen atom has a noble gas electron configuration. Remember that each line that's drawn in the double bond represents two electrons. If you count the number of electrons around each oxygen atom, you will find that there are eight electrons, giving each oxygen atom a noble gas configuration. A triple bond can result from the sharing of three pairs of electrons. Once again, we can use our diatomic molecules as an example. The only diatomic molecule that ex exists as an element is nitrogen that has one triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Three pairs of electrons are shared between each between the nitrogen atoms, giving each nitrogen. And if you count the number of electrons around each nitrogen, you will find that each nitrogen has an octet, or is isoelectronic with a noble gas. Blue is simply represented the number of electrons shared between two atoms as the bond order. Therefore, if a single bond exists between two atoms, such as the single bond between two fluorine atoms, we would, give this, we would assign a bond order of one. If two atoms have a double bond between them, a bond order of two is assigned. And if two atoms have a triple bond between them, a bond order of three is assigned. There is a relationship between bond order and the bond length and bond energy, as shown in the table to the right. As the bond order increases, the strength of the bond increases. This is because more electrons are holding the two atoms together. You can see in the table on the right that the fluorine molecule has a bond energy of 159 kilojoules per mole, while the nitrogen molecule has a bond energy almost a thousand, almost a hundred times larger at 945 kilojoules per mole. As the bond order increases, the length of the bond decreases. We see that the fluorine, the fluorine molecule has a bond length of 141 picometers, while the Nitrogen molecule has a bond length that's slightly shorter at 110 picometers. You might have noticed that there seem to be two extremes between the types of bonds. On one end, electrons are equally shared between two atoms. This would represent a covalent bond. On the other end, Electrons are fully transferred between one atom, usually a metal, and another, which is usually a nonmetal. This is an ionic bond. Ionic and covalent bonding do, in fact, represent two extremes in chemical bonding. Most chemical bonds are somewhere in between. In fact, Two different atoms, whether they be two metals or two nonmetals, do not share electrons equally when chemically bond covalently bonded. We can measure the ability for an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond by using another periodic property, electronegativity. The definition of electronegativity as is what it says in this third bullet point. It is the ability for an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond. 
The table on, a, on the right shows the electronegativities as calculated by Linus Pauli for main group elements. If we examine the trends among main group elements, we find that electronegativity generally increases from left to right across a row. This can be simply explained by the increase in effective nuclear charge. This increase in effective nuclear charge allows for atoms to pull more electron density towards, towards them when participating in chemical bonds. Electronegativity also decreases from top to bottom in a group. This is due to the effects of shielding. Therefore, we see that electronegativity increases from the bottom left-hand side to the top right-hand side of a periodic table. This makes fluorine the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. Note that no electronegativities are calculated by Pauling for noble gases. This is because noble gases very rarely form compounds with other atoms. The unit for electronegativity here is electron volt. Electron volts are energy units. We can use electronegativity differences between atoms to classify bonds. If the electronegativity difference between two atoms is very small, somewhere between 0 and 0 0.4 electron volts, Electron, electrons are shared nearly equally between the two atoms. This results in a purely covalent bond. The most pure of covalent bonds would be between two same atoms, such as the covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms. One way we can computationally map the electron density of a molecule is by generating electrostatic potential maps. This is shown for the hydrogen molecule as the green cloud around the bond line, the bond line structure. The green color of the electron density map indicates that electron, the electron density is uniform around the molecule. No one atom has more electron density than the other in the hydrogen molecule. When two atoms have a significant electron negativity difference, somewhere between 0.4 and 2 electron volts, electrons will not be equally shared between the two atoms. The atom with the higher electronegativity will have more electron density surrounding it than the atom with the lower electronegativity. We call this type of bond a polar covalent bond. A good example of a polar covalent bond is the bond that exists between the hydrogen fluoride hydrogen in the hydrogen fluoride molecule. Once again, we have generated an electro, electrostatic potential map. Notice that the colors are different here. The hydrogen atom on the left has more of a blue color around it. This is because hydro hydrogen, being the less electronegative atom in the bond, will have less electron density around it, which is what the blue color represents. Notice that the color around the fluorine end of the molecule is red. This indicates that the fluorine atom has more electro electron density around it, which is due to the higher electron electronegativity for the fluorine atom. We can, we can represent the asymmetry in the charge in the of the molecule by using partial charges. Partial charges are represented by a lowercase delta. When a delta plus is next to an atom, it signifies that this, this atom will have a partially positive charge when in a covalent bond, while a delta minus 
indicates that there's a partial negative charge. We have to call these partial charges because in a covalent bonding situation, electrons are not tra fully transferred to form ions. Then unequal electron sharing only causes partial charges. When atoms have a very large electronegativity difference, larger than two electron volts, the electrons are transferred instead of being shared. This results in an ionic bond. We know that sodium and chlorine combine to form an ionic compound. The sodium electron is transferred completely to the chlorine, chlorine electron due to the very large electronegativity difference between the atoms. Notice in the electrostatic potential map that almost all of the electron density is on the chlorine atom, while the sodium atom has no elect electron density at all, shown by the lack of color on the sodium atom to the left. We can use electronegativity to predict whether a bond between two atoms will be purely covalent, polar covalent, or ionic by using these general guidelines in electronegativity difference.